Hello, fellow scratchers. Have you ever wanted to stretch a sprite in your scratch projects? No, I mean in-game? Yeah, I know I have. What if I told you it's been possible all along? Holy mother of Scratch Cat, I just can't believe it. Think of all the possibilities this opens up. So how exactly is it done? Well, grab the fisheye effect and perform a little costume magic and wow! Oh no, no, not that magic. There we go. And then off we go and there's no stopping us now. I love it. So stay tuned and I'll show you exactly how to recreate this fun little project in Scratch. And we'll have a good laugh as we do it. Guys, let's get scratching. We'll begin by creating a brand new project in Scratch. And Scratchy will be pleased to know that they are the star of the show. So let's size them up. Whoa, too big. Uh, perhaps 300%? Good. And straight to it. From the looks category, pull out a set effects block, switching it to the much undervalued fisheye effect. Set its value to 100 and click the block to run it. Oh, Scratchy, what have I done to you? I am so sorry. And at 200, it's like they've got some tuna in their teeth and are checking it out in the bathroom mirror. So sure, this fisheye is good for a laugh, but how does it give us that stretch and squish effect that we are after? Bear with me just for a moment more and you'll see. First, let's animate this effect. Set it back to zero and drag in a repeat block, repeating for 50 frames. Then rather than setting the effect, we'll use a change block instead. Change fisheye by a value of 10. Click the code to run it and watch old Scratchy inflate like a balloon. Now to bring things back to normal, duplicate the repeat script and this time change the fisheye by negative 10, minus 10. This makes the animation play forwards and then backwards again. Therefore, this would look great looped over and over again. When green flag clicked, we reset the fisheye effect to zero and then loop forever, doing our fisheye animations. Click the green flag to run the project. I think Scratchy is feeling a bit tired. And watching this too long and you'll be yawning too. So with the animation still playing, click with me into the costume editor because now we get to have some serious fun. You see, although we can't modify the fisheye effect much through code, we can change it by modifying the sprite's costume. Watch this. Oh man! Surrounding the costume with a large box has caused the sprite to stretch out far too big. Let's drop it back to a size of 100. That's better. Now see how the central cat is being pulled out in all directions towards the edges of this bounding box? Then if I move the box so that the midpoint is directly over Scratch's nose… Yes! Yes! Haven't I seen this chap on the pages of a cute animal calendar? Oh no, no, this is just too funny. And interesting too, this one almost looks 3D, don't you think? No! Shall we try a wider bounding box? Oh, wow, that too is quite unique. Oh no, no! Oh, whoa! Scratchy, have you been working out? Man! So quickly, let me show you what this fisheye effect is really doing to our sprites. Here it is applied to a nice grid and the middle expands hugely and all other content is pushed outwards towards the edges. But look at this area down here. Do you see how it is being squashed vertically? And the closer we go to the bottom, the less warping we see. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? So, starting again, drag out a rectangle from the very bottom left corner of the outer drawing canvas, holding shift to ensure we get a perfect square, not a rectangle, and then draw it out to almost fill the entire width. Then using the selection tool, grab our square by the edge and move it upwards until the bottom line touches the feet of our scratch cat. And there, do you see what is happening? 
Scratch Cat is shrinking vertically down towards their feet with very minimal warping to be seen. Uh, let's just set the outline colour of the bounding box to transparent. And wow, we have it guys! An awesome stretch effect all ready to drop into our own games. Amazing! But rather than stop our tutorial here, what I propose is we put this to use and create a bouncing scratch cat project. Does that sound good to you? But whatever you decide to make, remember there's a link to a scratch studio under the video where you can share your finished projects. <laughs> the wackier the better. So yeah, bouncing cats. We'll start by speeding up this animation. Reduce the number of frames down to just 6 and we'll change the fisheye to be faster by a value of 40. And mirror those values in the repeat below. 6 and negative 40. <laughs> now we're rocking. Yeah, Scratch Cat's got some serious moves on. But this isn't supposed to be looping. So drag those inner repeats out into some free space. This is the animation we want to see when the cat bounces down onto the floor. And it's going to look dead cool. Drag the cat up, ready to be dropped. And we'll set the size to 100. Ooh, whoops! <laughs> Would you look at that? Scratch is not letting us set our size above 77%. It's that same age old problem. Our costume, with the added bounding rectangle, is actually really very large. So Scratch is preventing us sizing it up too big. To get around that, make a new costume. Keeping it blank is fine. And we'll name it Small. Now switch to that small costume and only then can we set size to 100. And that's okay for this small costume. Before cunningly switching back to our larger costume one, that's our cat. Excellent! Pop that at the top of the scripts and click the green flag to see the size finally restored to that 100%. Nice! Finally we can drop in a go to XY to ensure Scratchy is reset to the position when the project begins. And I'll just round these figures to 0 and 100 for neatness. Great! So now for the fun bit. We'll add some simple gravity. In the forever loop, change Y by negative 10. So that they get pulled downwards at a constant rate. Right off the bottom of the screen. OK, that's too far. To bring them to a stop, we need an if less than if the y position is less than zero, then we can set y position back to zero. That will stop them ever getting below the middle of the screen. Once you've given that a run through, Scratchy will be sitting on an invisible floor. All very nice, but I would like to see that floor for real. So click into the stage backdrop sprite and enter the backdrop editor. Now pick your favourite colour and then using the rectangle tool, drag out a new rectangle to cover the bottom third of the canvas. Oh man, that was so close to being the exact size we needed. Ha! You see, we want it to be as close to their feet as possible. So just drag the top handle of the rectangle up and down until you get it just right on the stage. There we go. Perfect. And they will fall back to the same spot every time. Now, this simple form of gravity isn't enough to create a good bounce effect. For that, we need the cat to accelerate towards the ground. And for that, we need a variable. But not this one. Delete. OK, make a new variable, naming it speed y. And we'll make it for this sprite only. This will keep track of how fast this cat is falling. Set it to zero before our forever loop begins. And then to model the pull of gravity downwards, we change speed y just before the change y block by negative one, a downward force. And now we can replace this negative 10 with the value of our speed y variable. Cool stuff. Smash that green flag. <laughs> and the funny thing is, we are so used to seeing gravity that it's hard to even notice that this is working any different. But compare it to what we had before and you will really see the difference. Better still, let's have them bounce back up again when they hit the floor. 
After these set y to zero, we also then set speed y to 15. That should send them shooting back upwards again after they've hit the floor. And it certainly does. Isn't that great? What a sprightly cat. <laughs> but yeah, it is a little unnatural looking. And, and why is that? Because it makes Scratch Cat look like he's completely rigid. You see, soft bodies tend to compress, squeeze and bend on impact with the floor. Haha, <laughs> well don't we just have the new effect for that. Return of the Bounce Scripts. These will do nicely. Drop them in before setting speed Y. And we should be able to check this out immediately. Oh man, what a transformation. This is just such a cool effect. In fact, it's rather mesmerizing actually. One hour later. Yeah, so the amount of bounce is matching the squish effect perfectly here. But what if we change the bounce by setting speed Y to say 5? You see, now this would probably look better with a smaller squish to match the smaller bounce. No problem. Pull out everything under the set Y to 0. And we're creating a new custom block for this animation, naming it the squish. <laughs> what else? And I'm going to add a numeric input named force. This is to record just how large a squish to animate. And since we are animating within the custom block, we leave the run without screen refresh unchecked. Great. So push that over into some free space and we'll make use of that squish block right away after our set Y to zero. Now the amount of squish force is given by our speed Y. And the amount of force required to bounce the player right back up the way they came is therefore speed y multiplied by negative 2, two times the force in the opposite direction. So the length of our bounce will remain constant, with a repeat for 14 frames. And each frame we change the fisheye effect, as before. But the amount we change will be dictated by the current speed of the player. Multiply speed y by, and I find negative 4 to be a good value, but you can play with that. Next up, we change speed y, again inside the repeat loop, and pop in a divide, because we want to change the speed by our force input, but divide it equally between the 14 frames of our animation. Finally, ensure the fisheye effect is fully reset after the loop by setting fisheye back to zero. Excellent. Let's give that a test. Smash that green flag. Oh man, I do love that. It gives an even more pronounced squish and jump now. And once more, I find myself... No, no, no I don't, because we have yet to test this with a reduced jump height. So set the initial starting Y position to 50, and we'll see what effect this has. Yeah, okay, this is more like it. The squish is reduced, and you'll note we automatically bounce back up by the same height we dropped from each time, and that's cool. At 20? And it's spot on. Whatever we choose, this is going to play along. So set things back to 100, and we can finish off this project. A scrolling background never gets old, so hide that Speedwire variable reporter, and we'll make a new sprite for the scrolling floor. I'm going to name mine Floor. Yes, it does what it says on the tin. We need a new sprite because poor old backdrops can't be scrolled. But click back into the backdrop now because we can drag the backdrop costume into our new sprite to save us having to draw it all over again. And then, making sure we are still in the backdrop sprite, delete the costume to avoid any confusion later on. So, with that done, you'll find the floor is easy enough to move around on the stage, but to keep it centered, set it now back to an XY of 0, 0. Now, I'm going to add some texture to this floor costume, because without it, you cannot tell when it's scrolling or stationary, and that would defeat the point of all our hard work. 
Okay, all done. Now using the selection tool, we need to drag a marquee around the whole costume. And with all the shapes selected, click the group button to group them all together. Next, begin to drag the group left, but hold down the shift key to snap it to a horizontal movement. We want to line it up just a few pixels short of the center of the canvas. But here comes the tricky part. Hold down the Alt key and drag the first group to duplicate it. But don't let go yet. Instead, hold down the Shift key again to snap it to the horizontal movements. And we want to position it nicely, just overlapping the first group with its left edge just shy of the center once more. Okay, let us script. When green flag clicked, go to x of zero, y of zero. And then we loop forever. Now we could change x by negative four. Click the script to test it. And sure enough, the floor scrolls left. But the scrolling speed needs to be controlled by our player. So make a new variable camera speed x, leaving it for all sprites. And we'll set this to negative four also. Click that block to ensure the value gets set. There we go. And then change x by the camera speed x instead. Perfect. Except the scrolling background ends too quickly. Not a problem. There's a reason our floor is made of two identical halves, as that can create a perfect cycle. If less than, if the x position is less than negative 240, that's half a screen width. Then change x by positive 480, that's a full screen width. And that is looking mighty fine. If you find the floor doesn't perfectly loop, then you'll just need to tweak your costume to get the two groups positioned just right. Exactly 480 pixels apart from each other, if you need to know. So the only problem now is that when the cat touches the floor, they skim over it instead of coming to a stop. Click back into the Scratch Cat sprite and we'll fix that now. We need to ensure this sprite is in front of the level using a go to front layer. This not only looks good, but it's important so that the cat scripts will run first before the level sprite scripts. And we can reset the camera speed X to zero at the start of our program. That results in the floor standing still, <laughs> like so, no movement. So next, let's move the cat sprite to the right by four pixels. Change X by four at the top of this forever loop. Now the cat happily bounces off to the right, but while on the floor in the squish animation, they stay put. That looks good. All that is left then is to bring back the scrolling. When green flag clicked. Forever. And we set camera speed X to a multiply block. We want the camera to gradually follow the player, so we'll use the X position of the player multiplied by negative 0.1. And it's negative because, well, I should have really flipped the direction in the floor sprite. Sorry about that, but never mind. Lastly, we must scroll our player too. So change X by and drop in the same camera speed X. Excellent. Run the project. And that, that is so cool. I love how the scrolling slows down as the cat bounces and it all just hangs together so well. You may notice that it feels like Scratchy is always hanging around a bit more to the right of the screen than he maybe should. And you'd be right. And that's because of how our scrolling is always trying to keep up with them as they move away. But we can fix it by summing the cat's X position with an offset, say 100. And that brings the cat 100 pixels left of center, like so. 
a pretty good compromise. But not the only option, so feel free to play around with that number until you find one that suits your game best. So there you have it! That's all our coding today, and you can try plugging in different values, for example speed up the cat's jumps by increasing the change x here. 8 is very good. And 18? Hoo-hoo-hoo! This would look very fine with a frog sprite, don't you think? You know, I really hope you will take this project and do something amazing with it. As always, there is a Scratch Studio linked under the video for you to submit your squishy projects, and this time it can be anything that makes use of this effect, not just a bouncing Scratch Cat, Frank or Penguin. Knock yourselves out and create something unique to show off. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If so, then please smash the like button to show me your support. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check that bell icon to be notified of my next exciting video the moment it drops. And a last reminder, if you want to get any Griff Patch merch in time for Christmas, then you must get your orders in very soon. Time for delivery is getting short. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great week ahead and scratch on, guys.